So you want to become a game developer, but you have no idea how. That's why in this video, I'm going to cover all the steps you need to know to start learning game development the right way. Now off the bat, the first thing that I'm going to answer is no, you don't need to go to college to learn how to code and make games. When it comes to game development, the best way to learn is by doing, which means doing through practical examples. Unfortunately, in college, 99% of the time, you will learn pure theory, which is not helpful when you want to actually create something. This doesn't mean that you should not go to college at all. If you can finish college, you should do it. I always say that. But it's not mandatory when it comes to learning game development. So what are the best steps to learn game development? Before I talk about that, the main thing I need to mention is that learning how to code and make games will take time, which means that you need to have patience. People always ask me, will I be able to learn how to make games in two months, three months, and so on. This is totally dependent on you and how much time you spend learning. If you can learn five hours every day, then you will learn faster than the person who is learning one hour every other day. So consistency is the main factor when it comes to learning game development. That's why I recommend that you learn every day as much as you can, even if it's one hour, but make it every day because learning one hour per day for five days is more effective than learning five hours in a single day and not doing anything for the next four days. Another important thing is how you organize your time because I see a lot of people complaining they don't have time because they work or go to college, they come home tired and they want to rest and so on and so forth. But then you see those same people spend a couple of hours in a bar with their friends talking about unimportant things or they watch Netflix the whole night. I'm not saying that you should become an introvert and not hang out with people or don't do anything about entertainment. But I'm saying that a lot of people are wasting too much time watching funny YouTube videos or going out with their friends or even sleeping too much. And all that time wasted will not benefit them in any way. On the other hand, they are claiming they don't have time to learn game development, even though they are interested in it. And even though game development will benefit them. So make sure that you have your priorities in order because that will help you a lot when it comes to learning game development. When you start learning how to make games, start small. I see a lot of people who are beginners in game development and sometimes even complete beginners asking me how to create a real-time strategy game or an RPG game or even a first-person shooter game. Look, I understand that you have a million game ideas and I understand that burning desire in you to make all your ideas a reality. But that is something that will not happen in the beginning. And especially not if you just follow a tutorial that will help you create those games. The point is that you learn how to create games and you create them on your own and not just copy paste them from a game tutorial. So even if you don't like it, you will have to start from the basics. First, you will learn how to code simple games like Guess the Number game or some game where a character can move and jump around the scene. That way, you will become familiar with the game engine that you're using to create the games and you will understand the process it takes to create a game from scratch. Focus on creating small game prototypes that resolve around one mechanic. That is better than trying to implement all features a game can have because the goal in the beginning is that you don't get overwhelmed and you familiarize yourself with the programming language that you're using along with the game engine and all its tools. And the goal of this phase is not to create complete games. The goal is to create functional games that are playable even if it's just clicking a mouse button to make a ball jump. The main reason why beginners quit game development is because they try to create complex games right away and I'm helping you avoid that. Also, when you are just starting out, 
start learning how to create 2D games because they are easier for a complete beginner. And yes, I know 3D games look amazing and they are cool and all, but 2D games are also awesome. And even today, in the world of VR and AR and all the crazy AAA game titles that are coming out, 2D games are still awesome and fun to play. And don't worry, after you learn how to create 2D games, it will be much easier to jump into 3D. So I'm not saying don't learn 3D at all. I'm just saying go with the order because that will save you a ton of time and headaches along the way. When you are watching video tutorials, don't get frustrated that you don't understand everything that is going on. That is perfectly normal. As I said in the beginning, learning how to make games requires patience and time. So if you're not able to recreate the small game that you're following on the tutorial, try again, and then again, and then again until you succeed. I used to spend weeks on a single tutorial trying to recreate the game that was taught in it. So don't worry if you can make it from the first try. When you start feeling comfortable with your chosen game engine and programming language, try recreating the games from the tutorials that you once followed on your own and try adding some new features or changing some old ones. That way you will dig even deeper in the code and the game engine and start to understand every line of code and every step that you took to create that specific effect in your game. Most beginners make a mistake by trying to do this right away after watching the video tutorial only once. Sometimes it takes a couple of times to watch the tutorial in order for you to be able to make changes on your own, so keep that in mind. Now that you went through the basic learning phase, it's time for you to create a game on your own. And when I say create a game on your own, I mean a complete game from scratch. A game that will have a main menu, a gameplay loop and game end. And no, the game doesn't have to be complicated, it can be a simple game, but the goal is that you create it on your own. I recommend that you create a clone of an already familiar game, because that way you don't have to stress about the game idea and the design of your game, because you are still in the learning mode. What's really important to understand is, don't try to create this game without the help from Google. A lot of game developers have this weird need to create the full game on their own. All the code, gameplay, game mechanics and all other stuff, they feel like they need to create all that like they are trying to prove something to someone. It's totally fine to use Google to find answers when you get stuck. In fact, one of the main skills that a game developer and a programmer in general needs to have is the ability to find answers online. The fact is that someone already had an issue just like you did and there is no need to reinvent the wheel from scratch when you can just use the answer that someone already gave. So don't think that if you are using Google you are not a real programmer or a real game developer. In fact, you are a real game developer when you know how to use Google to your advantage. So the sooner you learn it, the better. The game that you will create doesn't have to be large. It can be a small game, just make sure it has all the components it needs like main menu, sound effects, score count if you're using one, and so on. And you should not spend more than one month creating this game. And I know that this might sound unappealing because you have your own game ideas and you want to create something on your own, but please make sure that you follow these guidelines so that you don't get overwhelmed and that you don't waste time like I did and the majority of people who started learning game development on their own. What's important to remember during all this time is to learn how to code the right way. With that I mean learn clean code principles. You need to know and understand what is object-oriented programming, what is inheritance, what is polymorphism and how to use them to structure your code for your game. This step alone will improve your skills as a programmer 10 times. Writing clean code helps your code be more organized, 
more performant and easier to adapt and reuse. And the reason why is this important is because if you write sloppy code, it may work at first, but as your project gets more and more complex, it will become more of a mess and very hard for you to extend your code and not to forget the performance issues that you will have in your game. And not to mention that understanding clean code principles will increase your chances of getting hired in any game development job that you apply. Because one of the most important things is knowing how to write good and optimized code. After you go through all the previous mentioned steps, now you are ready to create your own game that you will publish online. Again, use the lessons that you already learned. Don't try to create something complex for your first game, you still need to keep things simple. I still advise that you go with a 2D game and remember to keep it within the scope of your possibilities. And I know that you have a million game ideas, but it is better that you create one or two systems in your game that work really well instead of creating 10 systems that are sloppy. Don't forget that you can always update your game with new content, so that is not an issue. Focus on creating a cool gameplay experience for your audience, which will make them fall in love with your game even if it's a short one. Because if they like your game, they will become your lifelong fans and people who will buy every single game that you put out. And this is how you need to think about game development. It's not a race, it's a marathon, which means you want to rape the fruits of reward for the rest of your life and not only for a short amount of time. This pretty much summarizes everything I wish I knew when I started learning game development. If someone told me all these things, it would have probably saved me at least 6 months of wandering on the internet and not knowing what to learn or even how to learn it. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, comment and share the video for others to see. I have a few links in the description below that will help you learn game development so make sure to check them out. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.